Hi guys, uh, today we'll talk about uh, biological control of plant diseases, uh, its mechanisms, applications and futures. So first of all, we must know what is the biological control. Uh, according to plant pathologist, uh, the use of microbial antagonists like bacteria, fungi, viruses to suppress the plant disease pathogens. Uh, in other words, we can say the biological control of plant diseases involves the use of natural organisms or their products to suppress the plant uh, diseases and uh, pathogens. So here you can see these uh, are some examples of uh, uh, the antibiotics or inhibition of uh, the uh, pathogens by the biocontrol agents. So what is the importance of biological control? Uh, that is alternate method of disease control as compared to the uh, chemical uh, control of the disease uh, that can be used uh, in where other methods are not applicable. Uh, similarly, biological control agents are non-toxic to the human being and the environment. And uh, these also act uh, on the selective target organisms. And biological uh, control agents are self-sustaining uh, with easy adaptation. Uh, similarly, there is a diversity in the mode of actions. We will talk about uh, the mode of actions and mechanism of the biological control in the next slides. Reduce possibility of in inducing resistance in the pathogens. Uh, for example, uh, the pathogens acquire resistance against uh, fungicides, bactericides, and nematicides. Uh, so that uh, cannot happen in this case. Uh, similarly, sometimes they are cost effective and uh, there are long term effects of the biological control agents. So what are the mode of actions or mechanisms of the biological control? There are uh, mainly two categories of the mechanisms. Direct mechanisms uh, that uh, directs the lysis and uh, killing of the pathogens by the control agent, biocontrol agents that involves antibiotics and parasitism. Similarly, in case of indirect mechan uh, mechanism, uh, that is actually the exclusion of the plant pathogen as a result of the presence of biological control agent. That involves the competition and uh, induced systemic uh, resistance that is called ISR. So uh, what is antibiosis? Uh, yeah, antibiosis are antibiotic mediated suppression uh, that involves uh, antibiotics as uh, microbial toxins uh, that can uh, at lower concentrations, even lower concentrations, poison or kill the other organisms which are pathogenic to the plants. So here, uh, these are some examples of uh, uh, this uh, antibiosis. Uh, here you can see uh, this is the plant pathogen and uh, this is the plant pathogen and its biocontrol agent and this has pressed the growth of this uh, plant pathogen. Similarly here, uh, this uh, uh, plant pathogen is producing antibiotics and uh, that is uh, inhibiting the uh, inhibiting uh, the spread of this uh, uh, pathogen on the plate. This is actually called the uh, poisoned food technique uh, uh, which is normally used for the checking the expression of these uh, biocontrol agents in the plates. So what are different uh, biocontrol uh, like antibiotic uh, molecules which are produced by the biocontrol agents? Uh, there are uh, either volatile antibiotics or non-volatile antibiotics. The volatile antibiotics uh, includes hydrogen cyanide, aldehydes, alcohols, ketones and sulfides while uh, the non-volatile antibiotics, they are polycatides and uh, heterocyclic nitrogenous compounds. So second uh, important uh, direct mechanism of biocontrol is the parasitism, the direct uh, utilization of pathogens as source of nutrients. Uh, in this case, the biological control agent uh, uses uh, or consumes the plant pathogens as a nutrient source. This involves um, the mycoparasitism, for example, in case of uh, uh, the fungi, uh, the mycoparasitism uh, refers to the association in which a parasitic fungus, uh, that is the hyperparasite, lives as a parasite on the 
other uh, fungus that is hypoparasite and that is mostly the plant pathogen. So also known as hyperparasitism and hyperparasites when hyperparasites uh, like biological uh, control fungi utilize the hypoparasites, pathogenic fungi as a source of nutrients as we discussed earlier. The hyperparasites produce parasitizing hyphae to acquire host nutrients uh, that may also requires, requires the cell wall degrading enzymes like uh, chitinases uh, because uh, the uh, cell wall of the fungi is made of uh, made of chitin and uh, the other fungi also release the biocontrol fungi also release the chitinase enzymes. So this is an example uh, of the uh, hyperparasitism and uh, hypoparasitism. In this case, uh, the Pythium uh, species uh, stopped the advancement of uh, the Fusarium culmorum. Fusarium culmorum causes the head blight of wheat mainly. So here you can see uh, the uh, Pythium oligandrum uh, that has stopped the uh, propagation of uh, the Fusarium culmorum on the agar blade. At high magnification, we can see that Fusarium, fusarium culmorum hyphae are uh, seen disrupted and uh, disrupted here. Uh, they are uh, distorted or uh, disoriented and uh, they have stopped the further growth. Uh, the contents are highly uh, vacuolated and uh, coagulated. There are more vacuoles present in the contents in the cells. Uh, which are uh, what are the steps that are involved in the mycoparasitism? Uh, these are uh, chemotrophic growth. That is uh, actually the growth uh, that is mediated by the chemicals. The biocontrol fungi grow towards the uh, target fungi chemical stimuli. Uh, the second uh, stage is the recognition stage. That is interaction uh, between the biocontrol receptors and the host fungus. And the third is the attachment and cell wall degradation through the gluconase and uh, chitinase enzymes. And uh, last one is the penetration through the epithoria uh, into the uh, host uh, or hypoparasitic uh, fungi. So these are uh, the uh, steps uh, which we talked about earlier. Uh, this is a hyperparasite, uh, this is uh, the pythium, and uh, this is, for example, the a hypoparasite, which is in case, uh, in this case, fusarium. The host fungus uh, attaches uh, to the uh, to the uh, the host fungus, a uh, pathogen fungus uh, gets acquired by the uh, hyperparasite, and then penetration takes place into the hyphae, and then barrier formations uh, by the host hyphae. Uh, takes place and branching and stimulation starts uh, by the pathogenic uh, fungi inside the host fungi. And then clematospores are produced by the, uh, by the host, uh, by the parasite, parasitizing or uh, the hyperparasite. Uh, clematospores are formed that, is, that are the resting bodies of the uh, or of these fungi and then uh, the lysis of the host hyphae takes place uh, and dispersal of these clematospores and uh, the hyperparasite uh, fungi into the environment. So third mode of uh, action of the bio, bio control agents is the completion that is indirect uh, mode of uh, action and uh, that is actually the exclusion of plant pathogens by biocontrol agents by competition uh, for space and the nutrients. So this is done by the uh, biocontrol agents by the production of substances uh, like the siderophores for uh, nutrient uh, such as iron acquisition. So the, these are the siderophores are the substances which are used by the pathogens for the acquisition of iron from the uh, environment and deprive the pathogens, uh, other, uh, the pathogens from the nutrients from the plants. 
uh, it is an indirect mechanism as I uh, talked about earlier. So here uh, you can see the production of substances uh, for uh, this as uh, these colors uh, uh, denotes uh, the cedar four production, this uh, purple color, and uh, uh, this deprives uh, the pathogens uh, for uh, acquiring the uh, acquiring the iron uh, from the host or in the in the for example rice hair. The fourth uh, mechanism is the induced systemic resistance uh, that is also known as uh, acquired systemic acquired systemic acquired resistance SAR. Uh, that uh, is the resistance in plants to a variety of pathogens induced by the presence or products of biocontrol agents. For example, uh, some uh, biocontrol agents release uh, salicylic acid and jasmonic acid and ethylenes, and these results into the activation of uh, different genes which are involved in the salicylic acid pathway, jasmonic acid pathway, ethylene pathway, and cytokinin pathway. And there are different uh, pathways where uh, these hormones are uh, uh, involved and these hormones are mainly uh, either induced by the pathogens in the plants or they are produced by the pathogens. ISR biocontrol agents may be uh, necrotrophic pathogens uh, and uh, non-pathogenic bacteria like PGPR uh, that is mainly applied to the roots or uh, as a seed priming and uh, metabolites of the pathogenic uh, or saprophytic bacteria. So, microbial metabolites which could be used uh, for ISR, as I told earlier, that could be polyacrylic acid, ethylene, salicylic acid, gasmonic acid, acetyl salicylic acid, amino acid derivatives, and hardens. Uh, stress can induce defense mechanisms against pathogen as well. So, induced systemic resistance involves defense responses uh, like physical thickening of uh, the cell walls by lignification, uh, deposition of callos, and accumulation of antimicrobial uh, low molecular weight substances like uh, uh, phytoalexins and uh, synthesis of various uh, proteins which are involved against the uh, pathogenic uh, uh, microbes like chitinases, glucanases, peroxidases and other uh, PR uh, pathogenesis related proteins. So this is uh, induced systemic disease, example of induced systemic resistance. Here uh, you can see this, uh, these are the uh, leaves in the, uh, uh, that are treated with the uh, water uh, in A and in B plant treated with the uh, benzothiazole, that is uh, the positive control, and in case of uh, the induced systemic resistance by biocontrol agent vesselus uh, species, uh, you can see there are uh, no evaluating or uh, symptoms of the, uh, of the uh, pathogens. So, what are the biological uh, control uh, agents application methods? Uh, there could be seed treatment, uh, there could be dipping, uh, dipping of the, for example, root into the solutions of the uh, biological, biological control agents or their products, and branching of the uh, of the solutions or suspensions of biological control agents into the plant roots. Uh, uh, they could also be applied as uh, foliar sprays and uh, drips, drip uh, water as well. So these are different uh, application methods for the biological control agents. So what are the requirements for successful biocontrol agents that must be able to compete and persist in the environment, and that uh, must be able to colonize and proliferate and multiply into the host and uh, into the rhizosphere, that must be non-pathogenic, uh, because if it is pathogenic to the plants, then there will be no use of this uh, biological control agent and that will cause disease into the uh, plants. There must be non-pathogenic to the host and the environment 
and must have excellent shelf, shelf life and uh, should be inexpensive and able to produce in large quantities, must be uh, able to produce high uh, quantities in less time and uh, that uh, must be able to maintain viability for longer time and uh, delivery and application methods must support the product, product establishment. So what are the limitations of biological control agents? Uh, they could be expensive and difficult to develop. Uh, handling requires training and high, high selectivity and host specificity is also a limitation. Uh, variation in the effectiveness uh, like uh, they could be effective under some, uh, some circumstances and against particular pathogens and uh, they are not effective against others. More susceptible to the environmental conditions and the short shelf life of the formulations of biological control agents and slow mode of actions and uh, storage problems. Those, these are some limitations of the biological control agents. So I hope you like uh, this video. Um, uh, please share with your uh, colleagues and uh, thank you very much for watching. Assalamualaikum.